So I came across a quote the other day um, that I've heard before, I was reminded of, um, by Jiddu Krishnamurti, and it's, uh, I'm just going to read it here real quick. It's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. You know, what, is this, what does this mean, right? Because I think we all have a sense of, of you know, what's going on in our world, especially if you're, if you're watching this channel, you, you probably have a sense that what's going on in this world, what happens in our society, um, doesn't really deeply resonate with us in some way, shape or form, right? We, we might sense that, you know, something's off. And I'm not just talking about with COVID, I'm talking about, you know, something perhaps you've felt your entire life that the way we live our lives seems disconnected from something authentic within ourselves. And to, to move away from our authentic self and adjust ourselves to a profoundly sick society, which I might argue is like saying a society that is divorced from something deep, meaningful connection, deep, meaningful authenticity, but instead sort of buys into this idea of where these mechanical machines just operating through this environment and you know the way we interact with our reality is is very much we just need to we just need to all get along we need to all just work make things happen in society our economy is important you know everything is all about production and how much we can keep growing the economy keep growing what's happening right this is these are the the, the deep foundations to which our society is built on and when you when you start looking at life that way which our news, our education, everything in life that's sort of, you know, bringing up, here's what it means to live in society. Here's what it means to be a, a, a contributing member of society. For the most part, always comes down to those types of, of factors that I've brought up. And you got to ask the question, is that really authentic to who we are, right? And how do we know what is our authentic self versus something we've come to accept as just, this is how we're supposed to live. And then when you have people that go, hold on, something doesn't feel right about this. And they start not feeling like they fit in. Society is so quick to point out that, that something's wrong with that person, right? Maybe they're feeling anxiety. Maybe they're feeling depression. Maybe they're feeling left out. Maybe they're feeling like, well, you know what? I'm going to kind of alienate myself over here because I don't know, something doesn't quite resonate with me. And then we start saying, well, you know, that person's not social or that person's, you know, there's some, some issues going on. And don't get me wrong. I think there are different situations across the board that lead people to, you know, want to uh, isolate themselves a little bit and sometimes maybe it's not the most healthy response but the point is is that we're quick to judge people that don't want to adjust themselves into this rat race or into this um, hustle and grind type of society that's that, that that's going on and you know when we look specifically at COVID and we ask how do we get so well adjusted to a society that is operating in a way that seems to be completely misinterpreting the risk that's going on right now and going about authoritarian measures, going about authoritarian action to implement on anybody who doesn't agree with these particular measures, but at the same time, just on everybody in general, right? We want to control the actions of everybody else because we think that the, the risk of what's happening with COVID is just so great. And you got to ask, how did we get there? Right. And there's obviously a ton of different ways you can talk about the fact that, you know, media has been censoring different perspectives. You could talk about the fact that there's greater uh, agendas from powerful interests that want to see a, an increased surveillance state. You could talk about all these things. Right. And we, we can probably argue about them all day long. Some of us are going to absolutely agree. Some of us are going to say, well, you know, that's not what I see happening, whatever it might be. Some of us are even going to say the facts are the facts. And it's clear that this is exactly what's happening. And I would partly agree with that as well. But at the same time, I think that sometimes things aren't as black and white as we want them to be. And so we have to admit that in some way, shape or form, it's difficult to get to the absolute truth about what is happening. However, there is still a very clear sense that we seem to be operating somewhat of a mass psychosis right now. And we, we produced a video about this not too long ago uh, on The Pulse, which you can check out. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, that The Pulse is our other channel, which focuses more on the journalism side of things. But, you know, there, there's something going on within people where we seem to be so well adjusted to this insane, sick society, if you will, that we can't even discern truth anymore. And our relationship to government is that of this parent-child dynamic where when we're in this state of, of fear and, and, and panic, which has been told to us, we are responding in a way where we deeply want to get out of this, uh, out of this 
this panic mode and into safety ground, into solid ground. And as a result, we are obviously demonizing anybody who doesn't believe uh, what we believe. And, you know, this is naturally happening to the vast majority of people. You might have about 70% of people in any given country who are saying, yeah, I, I totally buy into what's going on and I give all my power to government. And what is government doing with that power? Well, we look at their adjustment to this society and we look at those people and how they're operating and what they're believing in and what they're doing. And you're seeing this parent-child dynamic that says, look, if you want, if you want this, this toy over here, if you want this, you know, hang out with your friend, if you want to go and do this, you have to do what I say first, right? So if you, you want to enjoy life that you have every right to enjoy, well, you're first going to come through me and you're going to do what I want first and then you get that. These are things we learn as a child, as children, right? This is the way oftentimes, not every time, but oftentimes our parents, um, you know, raise us. And then that's how we then raise our kids, right? And this has been going on generation, generationally for a long time because the dynamic that we've learned in our culture is to control things, to want to have, you know, it, I, I can't trust that you know what you're doing. I can't have a meaningful connection with, with you in a way where I'm going to, develop this healthy sense of empowerment. And so we have a disempowered society that says, well, I have the power because I'm older and you don't understand, so I'm gonna control everything you're doing instead of helping you truly build that knowing and building that empowerment. The same thing is now happening in government, right? We're seeing the trauma there in their decisions as well. Well, you don't, you, don't, you don't know what you're doing. You don't understand this risk. We're gonna come in, we're gonna control. And if you wanna live your life normally, you're gonna come through us. You're gonna get a vaccine passport. You're gonna do this. And if you don't do this, you're gonna go in the corner and you're gonna be bad. You're not, gonna, you're not allowed to participate in society. Oh, but hold on, this risk isn't, isn't what you think it is. Or I am actually an adult and I can decide um, for myself what to do. And oh, no, no, you can't, you don't know. You're, you're too stupid to understand right? We're seeing the, the trauma play out. And in some cases, some of us are tra so traumatized within our experience and how we've come to where we are today that we look at that and say, yeah, no, that, that's how government should be. That's how we should operate. But it doesn't make sense. When I look at, I've been watching some podcasts and I see some adults like that are in their fifties and they're talking, they're like, government is trying to tell me that I, I have to get a vaccine to live my life. And I, and I, I think of how insulting that feels right to be you know uh like here in canada you know uh, our the, the prime minister would be significantly younger than many of the adults out there um that are you know in their 50s and 60s um and here's this this person telling them you can't do this unless you do what i say and it's like why are you treating me like a child right so people who are who are feeling like there's something seriously wrong in our society right now there's it's it's profoundly sick for some people who are recognizing that are going you you're literally treating me like a child this isn't this isn't right right there's something going on there and the the reality of the situation is is the vast majority of us are profoundly adjusted to that we're adjusted to accepting that dynamic and i don't know if that's a healthy response at the same time i think i think of my own experience in a, in a way in which, although I see through what's going on there, I'm also somewhat adjusted to this profoundly sick society in my own way. And I, this is where I think a lot of us might be able to relate in some way, shape or form. And this is just one way in which it can show up and I'm sure it shows up in many other ways. But you know, for me, I look at the mask mandate, for example. Within my integrity, within my research, within everything that I've done, I know that masks aren't stopping the spread of this pandemic, or at least not even close to the degree that it's being claimed. It seems like it's literally just an action, hey, do this. For what reason? We can all speculate, right? But the fact of the matter is, is I, I've done the research, I've looked at it, these things don't work. And yet we're being told to do it. And I don't wanna do it. It doesn't feel right for me to do it. But in some cases I do do it, I wear a mask. And I think to myself, what is causing me to do this? And I really sit with myself and I ask the question. And in some situations, I put on the mask because I'm afraid of the rejection. I'm afraid of going to the store and fearing that my community around me, people that I deeply want to connect with, are going to judge me for what I'm doing. And I know the, the simple answer is, well, you shouldn't care what people think. Well, yeah, a lot easier said than done. When we've been grown, when we, we, when from the very early stages, like this is my story, from the very early stages of my life, I've been rejected, right? Whether it's elementary school and, and I had different ideas, different thoughts, lots of people rejected me for that. Into high school, same story. Into college, same story. Into my career, same story. All I know, 
all my nervous system knows, all my physiology knows is that what it feels like to be rejected. And it's not comfortable. It's not a good feeling. It's not something that I enjoy, especially as a being and as we all are as humans, where co-regulation and community connection is so important. And so here I am thinking, I've adjusted my authentic self to a profoundly sick society that doesn't know what's going on by not being my authentic self. And that's something that I have to work through. I have to figure out how I'm going to heal this trauma and conditioning within my body, right? That gets me to a point that says, hold on a second, you know what, no. I, and, and it's, this is the kicker because there's a, there's a lot of people I see, I'm not gonna wear the mask, I don't give a shit, you know, blah, 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 and they're getting, they're upset and they're angry. And they're like, you're, you're not gonna tell me what to do and blah, blah, blah. And I look at that person, I say, that person's just as healthy inside, unhealthy inside themselves as I might be choosing to wear the mask because I'm afraid of what people think, right? Somebody who's stuck in, in, in a turmoil of anger and aggression and judgment, stuck in it. I'm not talking about you experience it momentarily and then it goes down. Somebody who can't understand why some people are choosing to wear a mask because they may not have been exposed to the same information. Some people that don't understand why someone wants to get a vaccination because they think that they're so stupid and they're all going to die is just as profoundly sick. It's not like, you know, uh, it's like, a, it's like a, a broad stroke brush. Well, if you're angry or if you're in my position where, you know, you're afraid that you're just as sick, quote unquote, as all the other people who are just buying into the narrative. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm more so suggesting to be honest and clear and transparent within ourselves as to how we really feel and how uh, healthy our, in, our inner journey within ourselves actually feels. Our, our body, are we feeling tense all the time? Are we feeling aggression all the time? Are we feeling angry all the time? Are we feeling like we aren't connecting with people, that we're judging everybody, that we think everybody is somehow wrong or stupid or trying to attack us or whatever it might be? Because there's, there's unhealthiness there as much as there's unhealthiness in, in other situations, right? And that's kind of what I'm getting at is what, what does our authentic self really look like? Because I believe it's there where we can understand how adjusted or unadjusted we are to this profoundly sick society. But it's also there where we can start creating a society that isn't so profoundly sick. And I'm not saying this is going to happen overnight. I'm not saying this is something we could just simply do. But I'm saying that this is the journey. This is like one of the early steps of the journey that we really have to take is getting clear within ourselves, getting to a point where we're well regulated within our bodies, right? We, our, our bodies, our physiology, our nervous system has been experiencing this profoundly sick society for a very long time. Just because our minds see through some of what's happening doesn't mean our physiology is in an extremely healthy state when it comes to regulation and when it, when it comes to everything within our body working in synchronicity. So there is work that has to be done regardless of our cognitive understanding of what's happening, right? We have to get ourselves to release these conditional traumas that we've taken on by experiencing a profoundly sick society, right? And which is why, you know, I personally believe that so much of this work goes all the way down to the deepest levels of, of our trauma and our accumulated trauma through uh, the experiences that we've had. Again, regardless of how much we see through some of the stuff that's going on, right? This, this goes back to a deeper level. So on this channel, we have a, a number of different tools, right? That help us get into self-regulation, that help us get into our bodies a little bit more, which lowers the threshold. The more time we spend really trying to get into the body, really trying to regulate our nervous system, getting ourselves less adjusted within our bodies to this profoundly sick society, will help us lower the threshold between when we're spending all of our time in our minds and that authentic self that has this clear, calm voice of what it is that we feel, what it is we wanna do, that, that knowing, right? And, and you, can, you can think about this, when you feel totally free within yourself or it's you know, a, a, a deep level of joy, you feel a sense of openness in your body, right? You feel that in your body. It's not happening up here. It's happening in your body. Oh, I feel light, I feel open. Versus when you're looking and you say, I see through this COVID narrative, I see, but you notice your body is tense, or maybe you notice you're entirely in your mind, or you're noticing, I'm, you know, I'm angry, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm, I'm trying to exhibit t tension here. That's not the authentic self. That's the tension again, right? So what I'm, what I'm suggesting is to get to that authentic self is that free and openness, that 
regulation in our body that feels, that brings about that light, free feeling body. Not just freedom here, but freedom here, freedom out there, right? It, it starts within the body in a lot of different ways. So this channel, we have a number of different videos that are, that are starting to focus on this a little bit more. You can check that out and there's gonna be more to come, so be sure to subscribe.